from Microbe TV. This is Beyond the Noise, episode number 31, recorded on February 21st, 2024. I'm Vincent Racaniello, and joining me today is your host, Dr. Paul Offit. Hi, Vincent. This is the video version of Paul's column on Substack called Beyond the Noise, Cutting to the Chase on Important Health Topics. The last time we talked about Paul's new book, Tell Me When It's Over. And for the next few episodes of Substack, Beyond the Noise, we're going to talk about uh, excerpts from the book. And today... Let's take a look at his column. RFK Jr. targets the Amish part one. So there's more to come, apparently. Uh, So before we get into RFK Jr., you you mentioned at the outset of this post that anti-vaccine activists target isolated groups. Give us some examples of that. Right. So there was an anti-vaccine activist named Mark Blaxel who wrote a book that was virulently anti-vaccine. And he went to Hennepin County, Minnesota, and then with the Somali American community, educated them about the horrors of vaccines, educated sort of in quotes. There was a dramatic drop in immunization rates. There was an outbreak of measles among that group because measles, as the most contagious of the vaccine preventable diseases, is invariably the first disease to come back. It's the canary in the coal mine. And so Hennepin County, then the the, uh, people in the public health community there had to do everything they could to try and get immunization rates back up again. But I think when you target uh, 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 sequestered communities, either for ethnic or religious reasons, that those communities are less able, I think, to get other information from the outside. So they're particularly vulnerable. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. So the isolated is the key point there because they don't they're not connected with good sources of information. Right. The same thing happened um, in Brooklyn with an ultra orthodox Jewish community that was targeted by a pamphlet called the Vaccine Handbook. It had um, phrases in Hebrew in it and it basically tried to liken vaccination to the atrocities in Nazi Germany, that too led to a drop in immunization rates and caused a pretty massive outbreak of measles requiring some children to be hospitalized with uh, severe pneumonia, including in the intensive care unit. And the health department spent more than $8 million trying to get that um, outbreak under control. It's hard to watch. So as you know, a couple of years ago, I guess last summer, there was a case of polio in a Orthodox community in Rockland County Do we have any evidence that it's linked to anybody running anti-vaccine campaigns there? It's likely because you had such low immunization rates in that community. This is Rockland County where this uh, uh, a man who uh, was in his late 20s who got polio. Um, the immunization rates in his particular uh, area were around 30 percent. And, and certainly this is the area that is targeted by that particular um, vaccine safety handbook or vaccine handbook, if you will. And no, I think it's likely. And um You know, I just, it's a very dangerous game we play. And you know better than me that when you see a case of paralytic polio, you can assume it's the tip of an iceberg that's much greater in terms of the number of people who are actually infected with that virus. So uh, RFK Jr.'s um, work with the Simone community was really a prelude to something even more serious. Tell us about that. I, I think there's probably no greater evidence of how disinformation kills than what RFK Jr. did in the Samoan community. Um, In 2017, there were two nurses who, um, instead of um, um, using a diluent that was uh, to uh, take this powdered form of measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, instead of diluting it in in the normal diluent, they they chose inadvertently as a mistake to use a muscle relaxant Two 12-month-old children uh, who were given this muscle relaxant stopped breathing immediately and died. And and he made a case of that. He said, see, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine kills children. Even when it became very clear within a week that that this had been a nursing error, in fact, the nurses were actually uh, um, imprisoned, which is, uh, I think, just way too much of an overstep. But in any case, they made a mistake. Um, 
That's what happened. It was very clear that's what happened. Nonetheless, he kept, he, RFK Jr., kept beating the drum that here MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine kills. He put it on his Facebook page. He visited Samoa. He met with anti-vaccine activists in Samoa. He wrote a letter to the president of Samoa, all saying, this is what happens when you give the MMR vaccine. And so MMR immunization rates dropped over that period of a year from 70% to 30%. There were massive outbreaks of measles. 5,700, more than 5,700 cases occurred. 80 Three deaths, uh, virtually all of whom were, in, all of which were in children less than four years of age. I mean, so there's an example of how disinformation killed 83 children in Samoa, and he at least was partially responsible for that, but took no, no. Um, responsibility at all for that. He in no sense felt badly for that, even though he was directly responsible for that. In fact, he tried to make the case that during that that particular measles epidemic, that it wasn't the measles virus that was causing it, it was the measles vaccine that was causing it, which made even less sense. And so you would think instead of being uh, chastened by what happened there, uh, he seemed to be only emboldened. Because then he went to Lancaster County in July of 2021 to talk to another generally sequestered group, which is the Amish or Plain people in uh, Lancaster County. And what was the outcome of that, talking to them? So he stands up, and this is July 2021. I mean, you're a, a year and a half into this pandemic. You're six months, seven months into having a vaccine that was available. And he proceeds to say how vaccines are unsafe, how, um, how vaccines aren't tested for safety, how they're never tested in placebo-controlled trials, and then proceeds to, to make light of measles. He said, you know, I had to suffer measles and that meant I got to stay home with my family and watch television. And what surfaced recently, and I put that in this particular substack, was uh, the transcript that he used to give that talk. And you can see in that transcript, he has two little smiley faces to make the point that this is just no big deal. Measles is no big deal. He then goes on to say that you can treat measles with chicken soup and vitamin A. He is uh, um, uh, amazing. I mean, he said once on the Lex Friedman podcast that if I'm wrong, he said, then I'll correct myself. Well, he's wrong again and again. People again and again bring up to him exactly where he's wrong, but he never changes because he is basically a paid advocate. He is a lawyer who advocates for a particular position. He works for the Children's Health Defense. Um, he doesn't do it right now because he's in the midst of running for president. But he, at Children's Health Defense, he makes about $500,000 a year. Not that I would imagine he needs the money, but he, he, he then is paid to represent this position and he's steadfast in doing that. He never backs off. This is it. Vaccines are dangerous. You shouldn't take them. And he just continues to try and scare people about vaccination to the point that they harm themselves or their children. So what is his motivation? The money being paid a lot of money and it doesn't matter that people are dying so he can get his money? It's hard to believe it's money, really. I mean, he's, he's yeah. a Kennedy. I mean, this is a very wealthy family. I'm sure he's wealthy, but the, 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 it's just he's a lawyer. And I think lawyers are paid to advocate for a position, period. I mean, you know, whether it's defending a client who you know is guilty or, or not, I think that, that that's it. He, his training is one of advocating for a position, and that's what he does. And we keep thinking that if, well, well, if we just give him information that shows that he's wrong, that he'll change, and that's never happened. He claimed that the Samoan outbreak was, was caused by the vaccine. Isn't there an easy way for us to know whether it's vaccine-derived or not? Sure. I mean, if you isolate the virus from the upper respiratory tract, you know, there are genetic tools available to tell you whether it's a vaccine strain or a wild type strain. It was a wild type strain. Is, is measles vaccine ever associated with causing measles? Like polio vaccine is associated with causing polio? Right. So, so measles vaccine is a live, weakened form of the virus. Um, you can, um, say, 10 to 14 days after getting vaccinated, have a low-grade fever, have a slight measles rash. Um, about one in 25,000 or so, one in 30,000 people will get thrombocytopenia, lowering the platelet count. You can get essentially a very, very mild form of measles, but not one that kills you. Not one where 83 children die of measles pneumonia or measles dehydration or measles encephalitis. That, that is not a vaccine side effect. So in addition to dying, these kids in Samoa died, as you say. As you know, measles erases immune memory. So many kids have no uh, antibody memory for a while until they get revaccinated or infected. And many of them get encephalitis, and that has long-term 
cognitive and motor issues. So this is not a this is not a harmless smiley face infection. Wouldn't you agree? And, and if you've ever seen, and I've only seen uh, three such cases, but if you've ever seen a case of subacute sclerosing panencephalitis, you'll have a healthy respect for measles because that is essentially a chronic infection of the brain where children just gradually decline. Their personality changes, their handwriting changes, they lose motor skills, they use, lose sensory, and they eventually and invariably die of this chronic infection of the brain caused by a measles infection. Usually it occurs five, seven years after the original infection, but it is a frightening disease to see about which you can do nothing other than stand back and watch the child deteriorate. It seems to me that RFK Jr. could be held liable for people dying. Has anyone ever tried to litigate? Not to my knowledge. It, it's hard to prove that directly, you know, because the, um, he, didn't, he didn't, you know, pull vaccine off the shelf. He just scared people about vaccines. And see, this is such a good point because when does one cross the line of a First Amendment right? I mean, in theory, you're not allowed to shout fire in a crowded movie theater. Now, the simple shouting of the word fire doesn't cause harm. What it, the reason it causes harm is because people are now stampeding out of the movie theater. Some may fall down, some may get trampled, and some may get hurt. I don't see how that's any different than this, than, than shouting that measles is no big deal and, and shouting that, that the vaccines are unsafe or that they're, they're never tested for safety a year and a half into the pandemic and seven months into the availability of a vaccine, which I'm sure no doubt caused some people to choose not to get vaccinated, which is what happened during COVID, right? We had um, about 30% of the population chose not to be vaccinated. An estimated 300,000 people died unnecessarily because they chose not to be vaccinated. Isn't that doing harm? Isn't that the same thing as shouting fire in the movie, crowded movie theater? It seems to me it is, but we don't seem to handle it that way here. It seems paradoxical that you can sue for having a so-called vaccine side effect when in most cases it's not, uh, but you cannot sue him for basically shouting fire in a theater. That's our law system, I suppose. Would love to see it happen. Just see, love to see it play out yeah. in, in a court, just to see what was said. For sure, yeah. Now, you mentioned he's running for president, RFK Jr., and uh, you mentioned in the article an interesting choice of his communications director. Right, so he chooses Del Bigtree to be his communications director. Del Bigtree uh, runs a group called Informed Consent Action Network, or ICANN, which is another anti-vaccine group. So I guess this is going to be your anti-vaccine candidate. It's incredible. I think America should be very frightened. For example... As you know, multiple states have now had cases of measles, including a sizable outbreak in your city of brotherly love there, Philadelphia. And, and just uh, today, a case of measles in Florida. What, what does this bode for the coming months in terms of measles, Paul? You know, we're living in this sort of post-truth era, you know, where science is just like another voice in the room. I think it's losing its place as a source of truth. And you may not have seen this, but Florida has its own uh, state um, uh, surgeon general. His name is Dr. Joseph Ladapo. And he put out a missive recently, just in the last couple of days, saying that knowing that there's this measles outbreak, knowing that it's occurring in Florida. And he basically said that um, a parent can choose to send their child to school unvaccinated. That's the parent's choice in the midst of a measles epidemic. Remarkable. Is, is vaccination uh, against measles part of requirements for, for school entry in Florida? Sure, there's, you know? there's a school mandate, uh, but you know there's opt-outs, so you can choose a religious or philosophical exemption, and that's what people do. They choose to opt yeah. out of vaccines. All 50 states have mandates, vaccine mandates, school right. vaccine. Do we know uh, the, 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 the level of uh, vaccination against MMWR in Florida, for example? Do we have those numbers? I don't know them. Uh, I'm, I'm sure they exist, but obviously there must be some erosion. And usually it's, it's in particular pockets. Like, for example, if you look at the polio case in uh, Rockland County a couple of years ago, that was in a particular pocket where there was low immunization rates. So you have to sort of get below that critical level. And Obviously, yeah. that's what's happening now all over the country. There could be a case in Texas, a case in Philadelphia, Delaware, New Jersey. So you're starting to see this bubble up. Um, right now, it's only a few dozen cases. Um, but, you know, get to, get to 1,000, 2,000 cases of measles, and you'll start to see children dying of measles again, which has a mortality rate of around 0.1%. I don't know when 
there's going to be a reckoning for these individuals who spew nonsense and false information because, you know, all of the anti, isn't it fair to say that all the anti-vaccine rhetoric is pure nonsense, not based on any scientific fact? Yes, I think that they invariably choose vaccine safety issues that are not vaccine safety issues. I mean, certainly vaccines, like any medical product, does have safety issues, including some significant safety issues, but that's not what they focus on. All right, uh, we will put a link to Paul's column in the show notes. That's part one. Looking forward to part two, uh, which uh, we'll talk about next week. That's Beyond the Noise with Dr. Paul Offit. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Vincent. 